So now that we've discussed hypotheses, um, we'll jump right into th talking about decision making. So a hypothesis test ultimately comes down to a decision to be made. Um, we can think about it in terms of what the claim is, right? So our claim, for the sake of illustration, let's suppose it's something like the population standard deviation of uh, some population is four in whatever units is that uh, makes sense. And so there's two real, real possibilities here um, that we may not e even ever know um, definitively, but it's either true or it's false. So either sigma is equal to four or it's not equal to four. Now, if it's true, that means that the null hypothesis um, is correct. And if it's false, that means the null hypothesis is not correct. Everything that we do in null hypothesis significance testing comes with comes from um, the null hypothesis, not the alternative. So we could say H1 is not correct and H1 uh, might be correct in the false case, but we don't actually care about what happens with the alternative hypothesis. Um, that only has to do with uh, how we collect our sample evidence and what the sample evidence suggests. But regardless of what we do, we have two choices for our hypothesis test. We have mutually ex exclusive decisions. The first decision we can make is to reject the null hypothesis. So in other words, this is a statement that says we believe H naught is not the true state of nature. So it's just not, it's not true. So we say H naught is not believed to be true. We reject it as a statement of fact. This does not necessarily mean that H naught is false. This is a decision. Ultimately, uh, there is the possibility of error, which we'll talk about later. We also could fail to reject the null hypothesis. Importantly, and we'll discuss this in more detail later, this is not the same as saying we accept the alternative hypothesis. This is not the same thing. So all that failing to reject the null hypothesis means is that we can't conclude that H naught is not the true state of nature. It could be, and in that case, H naught would be true, but we make no state, no judgment about H1. So another way of writing this is we have insufficient evidence to reject the belief that H naught is true. So if it sounds like there's double negatives going on here, that's true. Um, and we're very careful to avoid saying something like we accept H naught as true or we accept H1 as true. So one thing that's really important to keep in mind here is in null hypothesis significance testing, there is never a decision to declare something as true. Only that something is false or uh, that we can reject that the statement of truth. We're mirroring a concept in scientific empiricism. So there, there is an underlying level of um, this comes from the same principles that um, underlie 
how we know things to be true in the sciences and scientific reasoning. Empiricism refers to empirical evidence, so something that can be verifiable and uh, shown to be true with physical evidence. So our hypotheses and theories about the natural world can be reinforced with evidence, but we refrain from saying that conclusively that something is proven true. The best we could say is that some hypotheses can be proven true beyond a reasonable doubt, but this requires way more than what is typically provided in a standard hypothesis test.